Yeah, hey, what's going on? Got another one. And this one pissed me the fuck off to the fullest. So that's why I'm doing this. This one, again, I tell people all the time that there are agents out here. Agents. And one of the main agents I keep telling people is Tariq Nashi. See, other people are concentrating on Umar Johnson. I got to keep putting the, the Tariq Nasheed shit out there. And the only reason why people feel comfortable with Umar Johnson is because he seems to be down and out. Even if he is a scam artist. Um, and Tariq Nasheed se seems to be living high on the horse as a scam artist. And as I always say, people want to get close to people with connections. Even Tariq Nasheed himself said he doesn't want to deal with anybody who's broke, dusty, even though his audience is broke and dusty and he's soliciting money from the broke and dusty. But he says he wants to get with somebody who's bigger than him so that he can get bigger. He's all about the money. He tells you everything that he's about every time he talks to you. Like I said, when you listen to the guy, Everything he says concerning black people is always in the negative. It's always a put down. Whenever he does a black voice, have you ever heard him uh, try to mimic a distinguished black voice? Yes. Uh, black power would be such a terrific endeavor. And I think that all of our people should try it. No, he never says shit like that, never attempts it. It's always, what you talking about? What you saying? You nigga, you, you faggot, you want bussy. You know, always the same stereotypes that the white man gives to black people. Which should be no surprise to you, since uh, Mr. Nasheed is a coon. He's married white. He, his sister is Mary White. He calls his, he calls Latinos white. That's another agenda. See, he gives you information overload, but there are certain things. See, I, I, I get all the information. I take it all in. And I'm thinking about, okay, never mind all that he said. I'm thinking about what he didn't say, what he never touches on. And I'm thinking about one or two things that he keeps concentrating on all the time and one of those things is calling Latinos white which I touched on in the last video that's something he seems to make a great effort in talking about so if you if they're white like I said shit then the only people who won't be left being white will be Asians and blacks <laughs> I mean come on but his family is white. His sister, Mary White. And those are some nice rooms. God damn. Matter of fact, I should take a picture of those shit so you can see that shit. <laughs> Hold up. Take a picture of that shit. I don't know if they're cheap or not, but. I don't know if those are cheap or not, but. They are what they are. But anyway, we got to understand people like Tariq Nasheed, they're agents. They're a part of the white man's agenda. How do we know this? Because I had perf personal experience with house niggers. You know, I didn't want to believe that they were house niggers because when they talk to us, it's that street talk. But then we notice when they get around white people. It's that white talk. Then they start talking about they like Green Day and shit like that. And I start saying to myself, how the fuck is this possible? And then I noticed that their desired female was always a white one. Their desired one night stand was settling for a black one when there was no white one available these things I noticed I noticed that people would feel more comfortable 
around whites, even though the whites weren't necessarily comfortable around him. Because I never trusted them. Because of my prior experiences as a little child. So, yeah, this person turned out to be Jamaican, by the way. Only one ancestor, by the way, but, you know, he, they call themselves Jamaican whenever it's convenient. So, these are things you got to look out for when you're dealing with these kinds of people. The proof, like I always say, who you marry, that's who you want to be. And you can never get away from that. Because that's what it is. Look at Lisa Lisa, the old school singer. Black people, yeah, full force of Caribbeans. Doing our music, by the way. <laughs> uh, but they put her on. And I'm sure a lot of black people were thinking, okay, she's a cool Puerto Rican. Then what did she marry? She married the whitest Latino. I think he might be some type of Portuguese or whatever. She can get her hands on. Why? Because that's what she really wanted. Because of her parents. Some people might think, well, her parents is just fine. But it's not white enough. That's what you got to understand. White power has done a number on a lot of people. You know what? This just reminded me. These fucking Mexicans can't drive. I seen one accident with a Mexican. They fucked up a, a they didn't really hit it that hard from the way it looked. The Escalade, all the airbags were deployed. I, I don't know how that happened. I don't know how they can't see it coming out of the uh, shopping thing. Then I'm on the freeway. I thought they were Jamaicans at first. Now I'm not obsessed with them, but I thought they were like a super cat style Jamaican. But then so on closely, they were Mexican. They are off of a going off of an exit. The sign clearly, you know, it's very big. Yellow tells you there's an exit. Since he didn't see it until the last second, for some odd reason, he had to wait to the roll curve. This proves that these people don't know how to read. I keep trying to tell you, they don't know how to read this English. You know, if they can't speak it, how can they read it? Even though sometimes that can happen, but. So what happened was he kept figuring, okay, well, why get off the exit? Go through the street, turn around, get back on the freeway. He figured, okay, I might as well keep going straight and almost side swipes me. I'm blowing the horn. He's looking at me like I'm the one that's crazy. I'm like, man, these people are crazy. This is why the white man, this is why there's a lot of more accidents, a lot more crowding because the white man keeps bringing these people in. That's why I keep saying every time I'm around and I see these people, I'm like, if we don't get paid, God damn, we're not going to get nothing. At least our future generations ain't, ain't going to get shit. That's for damn sure. Because the white man already decides who gets what. They control the economy. They created the economy, and it's the small hats. I like to emphasize that because other people don't like to emphasize it because they're scared. Tariq Nashi, which segues into the main part of what I'm talking about. Tariq Nashi is an agent on his last live. I think it was called the New Sheik, which is something he thinks he created, but obviously the shit was just something from back in the day. And he found out and trying to act like he's trying to put some shit spin on it. He always talks about, uh, you know, this, this is why I want to confront this guy, because this guy is the biggest hypocrite out. They always talk about white supremacy, but he marries into it. He ain't his sister. How can you and your sister marry into it? That means you don't like black at all. That's it. That's the bottom line. And he'll say, my wife is black. But Latinos who are darker than you are white. That makes a lot of sense, Mr. Tariq Nasheed. To a con man, it makes a lot of sense. I mean, come on. Your wife came out 
of the body of a white woman. I mean, when you come out of the body of a white woman, I mean, imagine yourself being born. You turn around, even though you don't know what's going on, but imagine, imagine it. You turn around, you just came out of there. Are you trying to tell me now you're not that? I mean, if you see some girl that you know coming out of a strip club, what do you think? You think she has nothing to do with that? <laughs> I mean, come on. It's, it's crazy. You, you see somebody come out of a crack house. You think, oh, oh they're to they're, that's not what they're all about. Not, they're not a crack addict. They're doing something else. They're going there to remodel. They're delivering pizzas. You know, come on. You got to stop this madness. So this guy pissed me off more because this is why, this is why I'm saying you got to listen closely to these agents. He's now trying to, you notice they've been trying to do this with different people. He's now been trying to put a price on the reparations we should get. Either that or the white man told him, this is what you should get. You black fuckers. He said, for five years, we should get half a million. And then he tries to sound like it's great. And we, we this is what we have to have. Half a million dollars, $8,000 a month. Those are terms that the white man came up with. How do I know that? Because black people don't look at shit like pay me off over a few years. X amount of dollars a month. White people do that. <laughs> that's what white people do. Because they know short term, that's how they pay make payroll. Short term, it does nothing to take away and mess up the economy. Long term, you get what you want or what you think you want and they shut you up. See, half a million dollars, that's take it and shut the fuck up money. That's not reparations. This is the same coon who's been saying, we need this, we need that. We got to have our reparations. And it all boils down to half a million dollars. Now is that a half a million taxed or untaxed? Either way, it's petty fucking cash because once you get it, you have to shut the fuck up now. You can no longer cry out racism or none of that shit. See, that's a price where 8000 a month or 8400 a month, somebody else calculated, I didn't calculate it, I'm just going by what they say, over five years. See, that's the kind that's supposed to sedate you. Again, they control the economy. They know what it costs to live. So if you look at 8000 a month for somebody who's making 16000 a year, you get that in two months. You're happy. You're extremely happy. That's why you had a lot of people in his chat room saying, yeah, I'll take it. Give, give me mine right now. You dumbasses. If you take it, that's all you're going to take. <laughs> you ain't getting nothing else. That's why I say, remember Bob Johnson uh, threw his out there. I think his came up to like two and a half million dollars a piece or something like that. So they had these people throw the, throw the figures out. But we all know, even the white man knows, that most black people, you can give them $10,000 uh, for rep reparations. They'll take it because they're fucking stupid. That's why. <laughs> I mean, you, you sell yourself short. Then you got coons like Tariq Nashi sitting pretty trying to tell you or sell you on um, half a million dollars. Even Yvette Carnell, they're not trying to go that fucking low. You know my price, $10 million ahead to begin with. And tax exemption. Now you see, this is why I think the rest of you should spread, not only spread this video around, but spread these talking points around. As far as the $10 million ahead and the tax exemption. So that'll keep floating around more because people want to stay away from that tax exemption shit. If they only give you a half a million dollars, just to say that. That's where tax exemption comes in handy. Because you don't have to be half assed with the shit. You want to buy property, you don't get taxed. You want to go something, buy something from the store, you don't get taxed. 
Buy a new car, you don't get taxed. Half a million dollars ain't going to set you straight. People make that. That's like winning a fucking small or mid-tier lottery. You'll take it. This is better than nothing. But that's not what you deserve. That's nowhere near what you would call reparations for repairing what they've done to us and continue to do. See, that's enough money where if you're smart, you'll probably buy a condo or a small house, Move, probably take your ass to the south or somewhere, which is probably what they probably don't mind given the fact that all these Mexicans out here now. Take your ass to the south, buy a small ass tiny house. And then you feel, oh man, I feel good. Fuck that. What it prevents you from doing is moving into the high class neighborhoods. See, that's why I say they, they have to make sure everything is done in a way where you can't move up. At least into their territory. <laughs> you might be above the Mexicans and half a million dollars. You still got to be you got to be extremely smart with the money. Two and a half million dollars. You could be a little more liberal. Ten million dollars. If you blow that, you're a fucking idiot. I mean, that's, that's the bottom line. But eight thousand a month, even if we get the ten million, I'm sure that won't be a lump sum. But see, again, people have to get it out of their minds because a lot of black people always say the same thing. Where are they gonna get the money from? How are we gonna pay you? Ain't, ain't no we. <laughs> Don't worry about how they're going to pay for it. Don't worry about where it's coming from. You know where it's coming from. So just shut the fuck up and let it happen. See, now they're worrying about figures. Just like when you try to get a job. How much do you want to make? How much do you expect to make from this job? They ask you that question for a few reasons. Number one, because if you go low... And then we're going higher. They say, okay, cool. <laughs> if you want to go higher and they're going lower, then they're like, okay, this guy expects a lot more uh, out of us than we're trying to get. And that means he may not stick around for too long. So that's what they do. They try to test you on that shit. And they know what most black people, especially the ghetto fired ones, the, the piss poor ones, you give them, Anything that says thousands, they're like, I'll take it. Fuck the thousands. You got to start in the millions. Because we're talking about. Oh, man. Look at this Facebook talking about some watch some Mets game live. I mean, God damn. They have to. Facebook, man, I hate those notifications. They're fucking annoying. Anyway. You got to start in the millions because you're talking 400 years of reparations, 400 years of discrimination, slavery, stealing land, every damn thing. Half a million dollars is a fucking insult. And that coon agent Tariq Nasheed, he knows that shit, but he's worrying about himself first. He's a coon. He's worrying about the coon things and selling black people out. That's why guys like him got to be dealt with. But these agents, like I said, man, you know, as long as you pay a couple of these people, it doesn't matter. Like I was on that magic. What is that? That brother rich magic six, two, three with Ben X the other day. I was on that. And, you know, I told you I, I tried to deal with Ben X before he, uh, um, cut me off of Instagram, blocked me. <laughs> But um, he was on there, you know, he's doing his usual Nation of Islam style bullshitting. So I asked the question on there. I'm glad Rich asked the question for me. He's like, um, I asked the question, uh, what do you think about Farrakhan being a Freemason? You know, when the con job begins is when people start asking you that first question look at these two idiot Mexicans 
back in the, at the same time. Both of them act like they don't see the other one. Well, I, I should film this shit. Okay, they almost hit right there, and then they stopped at the last second. <laughs> but um, the shit always starts out when they start asking the question, what is a Freemason? Motherfucker, I didn't ask you what is one. I asked you, how do you feel about Farrakhan being one? need to hear what you have to say about what is one. See, when you ask what is one, that means you're trying to make an excuse. And then he went into, well, they're asking, uh, why would they hire one man to trick black people and tell all their secrets? It's like these these guys read from a rehearsed script put in front of their faces. because That's why I could, I could deal with any nation of Islam representative. Because, see, I already know what they're all going to say. Anybody who's dealt with them, they, you already know what they're going to say. That's why they're so easy to destroy. You know they're lying. That's the first thing they're going to do is start lying. But you know the, the script that they're going to lie with. Come on. What, why would they bring one man? Because it's easier to bring one man to trick people than others. I already told you how they do it with Farrakhan. He's, they have to keep him legit. That's why they keep giving him the press to make it look like he's about something. And he ain't about shit. They could have taken his ass out a long time ago if they wanted to, but they need him. Farrakhan is a coon agent. I'm convinced he went into the Nation of Islam as a coon agent. Even with that uh, Malcolm X documentary that was half-assed. Remember the FBI guy said we had people deep in there any damn way. And they didn't name them, but they kind of alluded to the people are still around. <laughs> Farrakhan's the primary agent because he was the main instigator in helping to get rid of uh, Malcolm X. You know, some people just love their masters so much. But that's how they fool you because you hear them talk all that white man talk that small hat talk it sounds tough but see this is why i always say this is how you could tell when people are agents without even having to dig too deep malcolm x they made sure they killed him for talking truth that's how you know it khalid muhammad same thing jfk See, when they really don't like you and you're really going against what they don't want, you get taken out. When you're a coon agent, they help you live and look legit. So Ben X was reading the comments. He all out said that Farrakhan is not an agent after trying to talk about uh, not a Freemason. After all, after basically trying to ask what is a Freemason? trying to soften the blow people think it's all about some conspiracy thing and blah 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 all that kind of bullshit they always talk if ain't no conspiracy what you need to be one for if you're in the nation of islam and farad muhammad is supposed to be your god if he's god i mean what the hell more do you need <laughs> shit i mean come on that's how you know it's a bunch of bullshit but then i put in the comment section listen no he he flat out said He's not a Freemason. But we all, everybody knew he was lying. I said, motherfucker, this shit is on the Nation of Islam website. He said they gave him an award. Just because they gave him an award doesn't mean he's a Freemason. I said, motherfucker, the article where the pictures are at says Farrakhan is a Freemason. And this is the Nation of Islam's website. So <laughs> because that's the source, why are you motherfuckers out here lying? Because they're programmed robots, they are not authorized to speak on it. So they just lie. <laughs> but look out for that. That's the one with uh, Ben X that was on there. It's toward the end. That's why I said in there, I said I'll debate any, and I do mean any, including Farrakhan, Nation of Islam, leader, representative, uh, Anybody who's inspired by them. You already saw how I slapped 
up one slap up and down one guy, and that's that Maurice Muhammad. He's not even a Nation Islam member. He was light work. I mean, I have debated actual Nation of Islam ministers when they used to be called ministers. And they can't deal with it because I go with the truth. I know they're lying. That's why. But anyway, that's done with that. So the point is, you got these agents out here. Tariq Nasheed's trying to talk for us and trying to lowball ball us on the reparation. Now, here's the situation. He talked about, well, Native Americans get reparations. They got their casinos. I mean, I'm sick and tired of black people always saying that. See, these are people purposely trying to trick you. This is why when we talk this Native American, some like to say indigenous, I guess, to di differentiate between those who got here first versus those who came later. But this is why we try to educate people. Others try to play the white man's role, the white man's game. This is why I keep trying to show pictures of other people like A1 when he was on here would show pictures of the black people with the fucking casinos. Those are the Native Americans with the casinos and they're black. I mean, you show people pictures you keep telling people, you tell people the names of the fucking tribes, and they still don't want to fucking accept what it is. Instead, they're scratching their heads. Damn, how come black people, how come these Native Americans are black? Why, how come black people call themselves Native Americans? They must be mixed with some Mexican types. That must be how they became Native Americans. And again, I'll go back to what I say when I was out there in those casinos and I asked those Native Americans and how did I know that they were part of the tribe is because they had the tribal jackets on. But I asked them, I said, man, I said, you guys are Native Americans? And he said, what do Native Americans look like? And I said, well, I guess like a Mexican, right? He said, no. He's like, you'd be surprised. And he left it at that. And I was surprised, but that taught me a whole lot of things. It made me think. And the things that it made me think about was how come every black American family I've ever met, including my own, always talked about a Native American heritage or legacy? You know, what the fuck is this now? Damn. They always talked about a Native American legacy. And I always said to myself as a child, I said to myself, damn, if we were taken, kidnapped from Africa, taken as slaves, how come everybody's Native American? I said, that doesn't make any sense. But then when you get deeper into the story of the Native American, uh, I mean the African uh, bullshit, then you realize that doesn't make any goddamn sense. So, these hustlers, these Tariq Nasheeds. This guy's supposed to be from Alabama. That's one of those states where the Native American heritage should be obvious. And not no African shit. I'm going to do a show on that in the future. I'm going to go live on that. So get, get your situation ready. I'm going to go into the culture that we should have concerning if we're from Africa or not. We have nothing that says African. No matter who you are and who you got transformed into, you should have some legacy of what you once were. Even modern day Egypt, where you got Ottoman Turk white crackers who have taken over. Even if you want to go to the earlier era, there's still things that went on in ancient Egypt that's still culturally going on today. This is what happens. You get you blend cultures. But we don't have that. So I'm gonna get into that 
at another date. But we got to stop this game with this Native American bullshit. Trying to say that they're not black. The ones that own the casino. They're not. They don't look like Mexicans. I mean, damn. He's out there on the West Coast. Maybe that's why he doesn't know. But he's a coon agent, too. So he's trying to mislead just like everybody else. When you show pictures of the people. Might put the videos up. Hell, you listening to this, you can search for it yourself. Everybody's going to think, okay, well, I guess these are just black people mixed in with Native Americans. But see, you got to wonder how come the black is always there. <laughs> Which brings me into another thing I'm going to get into also, the hair question. Because that's still a tricky thing, too, even from people who claim Native American, because I keep hearing people, black people say, my relative was a full-blooded this, full-blooded that. I never see the full-blooded, but a lot of them seem to judge it by whether the hair is wavy and shiny or straight. Which then, we have to get into another question. But I'm, I'm going to break that shit down. I'm going to try and get that shit down in detail. Um, But this tweet, now she, with this casino bullshit, he says that's reparations. He's like, we need to build a casino. Motherfucker, we already got it. You join the tribe, you can, you can get down with the program. He's like, the casinos make money. See, he's lying. He's trying to tell you, trying to tell you what to do with the fucking money. Don't listen to a nigga like him. That's the kind that'll try to get you into a position where he'll take your money. Don't listen to somebody like that. And for the record, those casinos out there are not making money. Why? Because when they first got them built, they didn't have any money. They had to use investor investors in credit because they knew casinos would be making money. But they still haven't made the money back to pay the investors. So they still haven't really turned a profit officially. Eventually, I mean, what, how long they been open? Like 20 years or some shit like that? 25 years? And they still haven't paid everybody back. <laughs> you would, and this corona shit is probably impacting that shit even more. Because it takes a lot of money to run a casino. Not too much, but I mean, as far as the free drinks, paying the staff, even though I looked into that, they don't pay that staff much. They don't pay the staff much. And, um, you know, electricity, because, you know, casinos always got to have a whole bunch of lights and shit on at all times. Look at Las Vegas. So that shit costs money. But the business is, the product is people bringing in their money and losing it. That's the product. <laughs> so... Conceivably, conceivably, that should be an easy score, but they just put so much money into the shit that it takes them a while to pay that shit back. And they still haven't. So maybe a smaller casino might make some money, but the way they have those out there, they didn't really make all that money. I was looking too, man. They That land in Connecticut, that is their tribal land. And they had the tribal... Their ancestors were buried there and all that kind of stuff. And so they got a whole swatch of land. Matter of fact, I think it's called Uncasville, Connecticut. And it turns out that that town name itself is from uh, Native American. Uh, I don't know the first name, but Uncas something. That's where that name comes from. And like I said, I think I did a show. I might have to update it on a map to show you how many Native American names are still around, which ties into what I just said before with the African cultural traits. If we really had cultural traits from Africa, it would be around. It would be here. You could see it, experience it. But the Native American cultural traits in this country still exist. And then exist strongly. Keep in mind, the white man didn't conquer this country as it's known now until what the fucking I give it early 1900s yeah keep that in mind 
you know, all that cowboys and Indian shit, that was about the Western expansion by force. That was war. People don't, they, but they, they quiet it down and make it look like it's a few skirmishes and shit. But that was fucking war. That was fucking colonization. <laughs> I mean, they, they just retell the history and, and soften it up. So, this clown, Nasheed, wants you to accept an offer from the white man. How do I figure it's an offer from the white man? Because this coon is putting it out to you. Eight thousand a month. Who, who who thinks about some shit like that? Only the white man. Black people want lump sums. I know eight thousand a month. But black people will take it because they're like, fuck it, I need some money. I'd like a Mercedes. That if that half a million dollars is tax, goddammit. Don't even think about it. You better get you a certified used pre-owned. <laughs> I know the dealers, they hate when I say certified use. I know they they like <laughs> I say certified pre-owned. I guess pre-owned just sounds fancier, I guess, or less harsh as used, you know. <clears throat> and they can't call it an open box because the car didn't come in a box, but you know, you, you get the idea. But um I'm saying, man, this these guys out here, man, don't have these guys speak for you. See, a guy like him, like I explained in the last video with this wealth shit, they don't want people to come up who had nothing. They want you to either earn it or they want to be above you. Because like I said, it's no fun being rich if you can't show off. Because that's what it's all about. I mean, you can't even call yourself rich if everybody else has what you got. <laughs> you know, who? I mean... If you got a, a Ferrari or a Lamborghini, the most expensive kind, and all your neighbors got the shit too, you can't say, oh, look what I got. You just can't do it. So these people, they don't want you to move up. People have been kept down due to race. I was reading some articles about some goddamn census. And they were saying something to the effect that blacks and so-called Latinos didn't fill out the uh, census that much. So they're trying to get you to fill it out. If you don't fill out the census, then you're not going to be counted and get that money uh, that you need for your area. I said, motherfucker, what do you need race for? What, what part of race helps you out in the census and getting and getting any kind of resources? That doesn't make any goddamn sense. That's the type of shit that'll help you out and keep it, keep on getting discriminated against. See, they want these Hispanics to fill in the census, but would these illegals really do that? I wouldn't. Now, I filled out the census thing. They kept bugging the hell out of me. I made up a fake name. I put down black and Native American. That's what I put down. I say never not put the black if you're going to fill it out. Put that Native American too. But don't put, don't take the black out because if they do try to do some slick shit, then, um, you know, they'll try to leave us out. But yeah, I'm back at this store again. I know it's these fucking Mexican types, man. They buy up every damn thing. I wonder how uh, this is a Sam's Club. I wonder how much this store would be popping without these people. Where do they get this money from? That's the main thing. See, that's the thing. They got all this money to be filling up minivans full of shit and all these fucking kids. And a nigga like Tariq Nasheed wants us to get half a million dollars. These people probably getting that shit just to come to America and work. I mean, come on, that's fucked up. <laughs> this man, this coon Negro. I mean, he's a fucking coon. And his supporters 
I'm saying, yeah, go ahead. But there were a few I saw. Nah, man, they ain't cutting it. We need millions. Fuck that half a million dollar shit. I told you, these agents, when they have the influence, it's about people with influence. If they can get you out there and talk about shit, they got to uh, co-opt them as an agent. See, on my last channel, the channel was growing. Drop a video, get 2,000 hits like that. I was getting more influence and coons. Coon agents of the lowest level, I might add. They were getting upset. They didn't like it. So they said, we got to cut this shit down. And they did. So, agents are everywhere. They don't want things that go against the white man's agenda out there. They need coons who second the white man's agenda. You know, now I'm going to get these salad because I know I'm going off. But see, I, I made sure I didn't diverge too much this time. Because uh, the last one I was listening to it, I was like, damn, I went too far off too many times. This time I'm getting those salad kits. I bought a Caesar salad kit from here, man. That shit was the highest quality. I know it's cheaper to make your own, but if I don't use it all, I'm like, damn, I wasted the shit. But the kit, that was the highest quality Caesar salad kit. I've, I don't even know the name brand, but that shit was good. High quality cheese and the uh, dressing. That's the thing. All these fucking Mexicans, I'm thinking I can get go in here and get it. Then I might go in there and then the shit is gone. Like I want that high quality turkey bacon. They got this high quality turkey bacon. That shit is good. Better than uh the Applegate. Went in there to get it, there you have it. <laughs> then I asked um the guy, he's like, We're sold out. I said, You sure you don't want to check in the back? If it's not out there, that means we don't have any more. I said, motherfucker. Lazy ass. White guy. So, <laughs> um, because I don't see that particular bacon. I forgot the name of the, the, the turkey bacon. Uncured, you know, that all natural shit. I forgot the name of it, but I haven't seen it any place else but this Sam's Club. Trader Joe's has a similar one, but it's not as good. That peppered one. And I was going to go there, but shit, I'm like, if I, if I buy two packs of those, at that price, I can get the one pack. This is like 10 bucks. And that shit lasts a good while. And Trader Joe's, they got the line. They're the only ones adhering to lines and shit. Everybody else, they, like this Sam's Club, this should have a line. Normally they have a line, but they're not worried about that. So I'm not going into Trader Joe's just for some fucking lines and shit. Oh, yeah, and another thing they got, man, they got a, uh, this caramel corn. I think it's called Popcornopolis, red red bag. I know it's just caramel corn, but God damn, I tried that shit. I said, my God, that had to be the best I ever had. Highest quality, rich buttery flavor. They say it's all GMO, no uh, fake shit. But I didn't taste not one corn kernel in the whole bag. And Harley came across the, the what do you call them, the corn skins or the husk or whatever. So they must filter that shit out, which is what all popcorn makers uh, should do to make the shit better to eat. That shit is on point. I hate to grab another one because of the sugar content, but... I, I, just one more. I'll, I'll take one more. But anyway, close this out. We must spread the word on ten million ahead or tax ex exemption on this reparations. Whether you, whatever site you go on, especially the people with influence like the Yvette Carnells and all those people, because I notice these people keep shying away, running away from the tax exemption, and I think that. It might be because the white man does not want them to spread that shit around. You know, because tax is how they keep people in debt and enslaved. 
So they don't want to take that away because life would actually be a lot less stressful and a lot easier to navigate through if you didn't have to worry about filing taxes, whether you own the business or not. But see all the taxes and shit, that's how they keep track of what you make, how you make it, how frequently you make it, so they can know how to put it into that shit when they need to. <laughs> that's what it's all about. So, it's Tariq Nashi pissed me the fuck off. I'm like, how is this man going to try and say, yeah, 500000 that's what we need, 500000 8000 a month, we good. Hell no. That's how you know he got the white man telling him what to say. And that's why I won't stop until this man reveals his mother-in-law and her family and his sister and her family. Show us them. Then we will believe that you don't have nothing to hide, Mr. Nasheed. But until then, I'm still coming at you. Putting a half a million dollar price limit on us. Are you fucking out of your mind? Damn, this man blowing up a whole ton of waters. Yeah, damn. And ice. Guess it must be for a little business. See, these Mexicans got their business and shit. And by the time he take that ice to where it has to get to, that shit might be melted. <laughs> damn, all these people I know, these lines are going to be long as fuck. I know it, but... Some things in Sam's Club you can only get at the place. So, <laughs> gotta do it. BJ's, I let that shit go because the membership left. It, it ran out at the end of the month, in the last month. And I tried to take something back, they wouldn't take it back. Because they said, oh, the COVID, we can't take it back. I'm like, what do you normally do with the shit anyway? You throw this shit out when it's food. So what the fuck is the difference now? You're just trying to keep people's money. That's what it is. But see, when that happened, I called the manufacturer. Manufacturer gave me my money back, though. Because the there was some salmon. I think I told you this before. It was some salmon uh, burgers. And the shit had genetically modified ingredients. And I called them up. They said the uh, what was genetically modified was the soybean oil, not the salmon. I said, what the hell? Did, why'd you need genetically modified soybean oil? Why do you need soybean oil to begin with? Salmon has its own oil, number one. Well, what did you need it for? They didn't, they didn't want to answer. <laughs> and they also said that it's the same brand that makes the CPAC fish food and that I asked her is there any uh, soybean oil or genetically modified shit in that she didn't get back to me on that so you know it is what it is on that what do you need that for I mean it, 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 there's so many cheap oils out there if it's about price what do you need genetically modified soybean oil what do you need soybean oil to begin with Makes no sense, but I got my money back on that. And, and one thing before I go to those burgers, I guess they were trying to taste like salmon hamburgers. I mean, it was called salmon burgers, but I bought some before, a different brand, and just taste, I guess, salmon cakes and salmon burgers. I guess that's a different thing. But that's the only thing I miss out of BJ's. I bought a few of them, though. The salmon cakes that they make, which are hard to find because every time you go there, they're always gone. But if you find them, get them. Now, those are very good for their own house brand. Better than independent brands. But anyway, don't let a Negro like Tariq Nashi try to get you to compromise on a half a million dollars. So that's the thing. We might be angered. We might want the reparations. But at the end of the day, who's making the decision for us? That's the question. 
See, they're trying to compromise on something that looks good, but it's not good. They want to give you something to shut you up, but nothing that'll truly put you ahead and transform your lives. A half a million dollars over five years. What is that? <clears throat> 8,000 a month? What is that? 96,000 a year. And if that shit is taxed, my God, you ain't getting shit. That's what you got to think about. See, you got to think about everything. Tariq Nashi, speaking for the white man, is telling you, give you 100,000 a year. Like you're working a job. And get taxed. That's all you need over five years. Half a million dollars is small money. They can give you that in a lump sum. And like I said, no matter how it's done, if it's taxed, <laughs> I mean, then they fucking you over. Fuck that. Tax exemption must come with it all. When they float around low shit like that and you got a cool Negro like Tariq Nasheed, and I'm talking to you directly, coon, because that's coon talk. That's coon explaining. That's what you're doing. You're saying, give these people a half a million dollars. They'll take it. Of course, most, I don't know about most, but a good deal will take it. But when you do take it, that means you have to shut up forever about white supremacy. And that means you too, Tariq Nasheed. You have to shut the fuck up about racism and white supremacy. Because now that you got reparations, you're half a million dollars. The, the white man says, hey, I paid my debt. So shut the fuck up. <laughs> you can't talk anymore. That's the way it works. You sue somebody, you got what you got. Okay, shut up about it now. It's all over with now. So Tariq Nasheed, you coon. Don't try to sell us out. You sell yourself out. But then again, you already sold the fuck out. That's why you got white family. You coon.